Hi everyone, hope you are doing great. On this video, I would like to talk about a key topic in the development world. Uh, it is the database joins. For us to understand everything related with SQL joins, I will start by explaining a little bit of set theory. And also I prepared a, a simple animation for going a step by step. After that, I will be uh, running some examples in PostgreSQL. We can use any DBMS of our preference because at the end it is all SQL and we have this in all the DBMS. Now, let's start with the basics behind SQL joins. In this case, let's suppose that we have two tables, table A and table V. You can think uh, of these tables as a table, as a group of numbers, whatever you want in this case. Let's suppose that in table A, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that's all. And in table V, we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Let's suppose that we want to get the records that are in common to these two groups. That means records that are in one group, but they are also in the other group. It will look like this. It is also called intersection. Why? Because we are getting the intersection between these two circles. In this case, this intersection, the common values will be 5 and 6. What if we want to get the values that are in A, but they are not in B? Then in that situation, it will look like this. As you can see, the operation is basically A minus B. And in this case, we get the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. The opposite case will be if we want all the records in V, but they are not in A. So in that case, we will get the numbers 7, A, 9, and 10, as it is in the image. Finally, what if we want to get all the values? The union of these two groups. In this case, we will get the numbers from 1 to 10. Now that we have some of the basics behind SQL join, let's start going deeper with some uh, joins. In general, there are four types of joins. Starting with the inner join, the left join, right join, and the full outer join. The inner join is basically the intersection between the two subgroups. So we get the values that are in common. The left join is all the values on the left plus the values on the right associated to one value on the left. The right join is the opposite. The values on the right plus the values on the left associated to one value on the right. And finally, the full outer join means all the values basically all the values on the left values on the right and values in the intersection i know that this is kind of confusing but before going into the examples and more detail i would like to explain the syntax so for the inner join as you can see we are basically using select star basically all the attributes from table a inner join table b and then the joining key. Then for the left join, it is quite similar, but in this case we use the keyword left join, and then the keyword that we are joining the two subgroups. For the right join, it is exactly the same. We just need to replace the keyword left with the keyword right, and then we will be doing right join. And finally, for Getting all the data between these two subgroups, we need to use the keyword full outer join. In that way, we will get all the data, data in A and data in V. We already covered all the basics and the theory. So let's start with some real examples. I prepared this scenario, and this is basically the relationship between the employee and the department. So we have some premises. In this case, one employee can be assigned to zero or one department. And also one department can be assigned to zero or N employees. 
we are not defining any foreign key constraint or similar because we just want to keep it simple. Given that, let's see the different scenarios. If we want to do an inner join in this case, we want to get the employees associated to a department. If we want to do a left join, we want to execute the query to fetch all the employees even if they are not assigned to a department. If they are assigned to a department, we get the department information. Otherwise, we just get empty values or, or null. Then the opposite is the right join. We want to get all the departments even if they are not associated to an employee. In that case, if the department has employees, we will retrieve that information. Otherwise, we get empty values. And finally, the full outer join. We get all the employees, we get all the departments, for the entries that doesn't have a matching pair on the other side, we just get we just get empty values or null. Once all that is explained, let's go into the console to execute some examples and get in practice what we just discussed in theory. This is the user interface provided by PostgreSQL. And in this case, I created two tables that we discussed. Uh, I created them as simple as possible because I just want to run these examples with the minimal, minimum data and the minimum amount of columns. So in starting with the department, this is the structure of this table, basically an ID, the department name and the description. And then for the employee, it is basically the employee ID, the name, the email, and finally the department ID. This is the association with the department. So in this table, we have the ID and this is one to end relationship. One employee can be assigned to only one department, but one department can be assigned to multiple employees. I didn't create any constraint to keep it simple and also to explain all the different joints that we are discussing in this video. Now let's go one by one through all the different examples that we have discussed passing through all the joins. So starting with the inner join, as I explained before, inner join means we want to get the data that is in common to the two tables. If we go back to these tables, if I run it, you will see that, for example, we have employee, sorry, department 100. And the departments are starting from two. So if I want to get the employees, there are departments, there are employees assigned to department number one, but that department does not exist. So in that case, we shouldn't see these records because they are not in common. We should see only records that are in both. For example, Department 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let's run this query. As you can see down here, the department ID 2, 3, 4, and 5, all the employees that are assigned to any of those departments. Basically, the intersection are we discuss records in both. Now, if we want to get the data on the left, with the data in common on the right, that's the left join. So we want to get all the records on the left, including the common values on the right. So if we check the information that we have, the idea is to get all the employees. We have 10 and the department information if it exists. So let's go to the left join. If I run it, as you can see, I'm getting 10 records, but there are some columns associated to the department that are null. This null means that there is no data for this entry. We are getting the employee because we are using left join, but there is no information associated to it. On the other side, if we want to run a right join, it is 
opposite. So we want to get all the departments, even if there is no employee associated to it. For example, in this case, we have department 100. If we go to the employees, we don't have any employee associated to that department. So let's see what happened. If I run this query, as you can see, department 100 is right here, but we just get null empty values for the employees information because there is no information associated to it. And finally, what if we want to get everything, all the employees, all the department, even if there is no information associated to them. So that's the full outer join. And it is really simple to execute. It is just like this. So as you can see, in this case, we are getting null values on both sides. If we have employee information, but we don't have department information, we get null on the right. If we have the department information, but we don't have employee information, we get null on the left. And in this way, we have covered all the possibilities in regards to join. And this is with the basics, because there are more scenarios that we can cover. And with SQL, we can build whatever we want to get from the database. I hope that this information was useful for you. If you have any question, leave it in the comments, please. And thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.